So we'll give everybody a minute to join in here, uh, but today's pretty special. Uh, today we are talking, about, it's the breakup issue, so we are talking about uh, how people broke up with their client. So let me join myself live here. Um, so pretty fun. We'll see how this goes. Uh, we've also got, today we are sponsored by uh, NKBA. They are, so apparently Facebook Live was giving me issues there. So uh, so today is a pretty special event. We are being sponsored by NKBA. Um, they are giving away two free pa passes to this year's Holiday Party and Masquerade Ball. So the 15th caller that calls in and joins the call live uh, wins the two free passes. So it could be date night. We'll do the whole masquerade ball thing. You get all done up. And um, I checked out their website, and they've even got helicopter rides. So crazy, crazy time. It is on December 8th. Uh, in Fullerton. So uh, if you're watching right now, tag your SoCal friends, Palm Springs, San Diego, LA, Bakersfield, uh, tag them and let them know that they can call in. Caller number 15 has a chance to win two free tickets to the Holiday uh, Masquerade Ball by NKBA. So today's topic is... Uh, uh, it's the breakup issue. So along with calling in, uh, go ahead and when you call in today, tell us either a, a, a fucked up story about like one of your worst clients ever or, um, you know, one of your funniest ones, like why you ended up having a breakup with a client. So uh, Design Talk is a weekly call-in talk show. So it's not about me talking. It's not about me teaching. I am not a business coach. I am not a life coach. Dear God, don't follow my life pattern. Um, pave your own. <laughs> and um, But call in. This is about you guys. This is about you guys having a voice and uh, and calling in. Have a little bit of fun with this. There's a no parental advisory on Facebook. So you're able to call in and, and cuss it up if you want to. Throw, let those F-bombs go. Um, this is about being passionate about our industry. Uh, I believe that uh, I've been in the industry for 18 years, and I believe that we are going from an industry to a community, and a community talks. So this is a live call-in talk show, so hit the call-in button and join in live. Uh, and again, today's topic is, I'm fucking done, um, how I broke up with a shitty client. So uh, passionate about what? Uh, about the industry. Uh, we Every day you wake up, you go to work. Um, we, if, if you're in the industry in any capacity, you're the welder for a custom fabrication shop. You're the owner of a, of a company. You're the bookkeeper at a company. We, we do this to put food on our table, um, and a roof over our head. And, uh, we can pick some other industry. We can go get a job somewhere else. Uh, you live in a free world. You're able to go do whatever you want to do. Go, go take a job that you want to go work for. Uh, this interior design industry is a very creative industry. And so what are we passionate about? Well, we're passionate about our, our livelihood. Um, and we're passionate about the effect that this livelihood has on other people. So, um, so yeah. And there's a lot of change going on in our industry. There's a lot of uh, digital media and this whole thing. So today's topic is, I'm fucking done, how I broke up with a shitty client. So call in, share with us uh, some some funny stories share with us uh about that shitty client that you just couldn't wait to get rid of um and today caller number 15 uh wins two free passes to nkba's holiday masquerade ball in fullerton uh on december 8th so a good chance to get dressed up uh take a date good date night and um and join join us live so uh, I hope everybody got their hair and makeup done. Uh, call in. It doesn't much matter. I don't care if your hair and makeup is done or not. You still got a chance to win. So, um, so yeah, feel free to call in. Uh, join the call. Um, so kind of the stuff that's been going on this week. Uh, I don't know. There's been a lot of 
a lot of uh, business coaches uh, next week, um, December 5th. Uh, we are doing a, let me look it up here, and I guess I'll put it in the, in the uh, posts. But oh, let me join the call here live too. So call in, uh, Alyssa, uh, call in. Um, today, caller number 15 has a chance to win or wins uh, two free passes to the NKBA Holiday Masquerade Ball. So, uh, so call in, mention people in the SoCal area that are uh, uh, that are in the area and can win a chance or can win two free passes to the holiday masquerade ball what is going on with that video let me go here so um try to join is this not set up for live let's see We should be set up for live. Let's see. Let's see if I can add. Boyd was trying to call in, so let me invite a few people in. Boyd, you were trying to call in. Let me try to add you in here. Oh man, it's gonna make me go through void. Let's see, void. So void, I just invited you in. So let's see how that goes. And yeah, Jill, call in on the green button. Let me add you into I'll invite you in. This has got to look funny on your guys' end, but Jill, let's just invite you in. Let's get a few of these in here. All right, so Boyd, I sent you the invitation. There should be a little green button on your bottom of your screen. So just click that and then join in. Today's 15th caller wins two passes to NKBA's uh, Holiday Masquerade and Ball. Insert drum roll. Yeah, Casey, you could be it. I don't know. Are you planning on going to the uh, NKBA Holiday Masquerade and Ball? Uh, it should be a blast. I think you would dig it. Uh, if you haven't met Casey, um, or if you have met Casey, I know Rod uh, knows Casey. I think uh, uh, Casey and Paul would be uh, would would enjoy a masquerade ball in Fullerton. So um, I'd love to see. Let's see. Bobby is calling in. Uh, remember, call in. Caller number fifteen wins, and today we're the topic is uh, how you you broke up with a shitty client. So curious what Bobby has to say today, and then uh, and then feel free to call in. Caller number fifteen. We've got an hour to call in. So caller number fifteen. Caller number fifteen wins uh, two free passes to the holiday masquerade ball. So. Hey, Bobby. Hey, you caught me. I was driving, so I pulled over. So I'm being legal. Oh man, that's yeah. uh, that's funny. You see so many people driving while going live. Oh, I tell <laughs> you what. I don't. I got a girlfriend who's out there, Terry Kazaya. She's out in North Dakota, and she's in charge of um, spreading the word about driving safety. So she'd have my head on a platter if I were driving. 
as I was talking. So anyway. That's too funny. Yeah. So, um, so the, today's topic was it, 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 um, how you broke up with a shitty client. So have you had a breakup with one? And you don't have to name names. I know. You could, uh... <laughs> it's probably best not to name names. So um, I'm trying to decide if I should make it a man or a woman because the person with whom I'm speaking of um, is a very, very, very well-known uh, realtor in our area. And um, I think I'm going to make it a woman. That's what I'll do. Um, okay. Hold on a second. Somebody's trying to buy a sofa I'm selling. Um, anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I did. I had a breakup story, and I don't know if it's sad, happy, or, or what. But um, I'm a home stager. And so, you know, I, I deal with a different uh, part of the design world. And um, we, as stagers, we're always looking to connect with realtors. And when I was a rookie, I've been in business 14 years now, but when I was a rookie, I thought, well, of course I want to work with the top realtors because, you know, they have lots of listings that'll give me lots of business. And that's what I was going to do, right? Yeah. Well, then I met her. And you've actually frozen up on me. There you are. Okay, you're back. So um, anyway, so... Um, I was summoned to um, her office, and uh, I got there, and she wasn't even there. It was her, her minions, let's say. And so I went in there, and I was talking to them. I was so excited to let them know what I could do for them and for their clients, da, 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 da. So finally, she comes in, and um, she doesn't even really speak to me. She kind of speaks at me. And, you know, all these red flags are going off in my head, but... I just, I, I want to work with one of the, you know, the most prolific realtors in the area. So anyway, in the end, I went, I told her, you know, what she wanted me to do was to provide um, a short consultation to these clients with the hope that they would hire me to come back and do the work. Well, that's not the way I work. And so I explained to her about that. And then in the end, um, I made an agreement with the devil. Um, I said, okay. I'll do it your way. I went, when I was in business five years at the time, I knew, I knew I shouldn't say yes. You, you can smell them a mile away. You just, you kind of don't listen to your instincts, right? Oh my God. I just was like, I went in there. I was just going to tell her, no, oh, this is the way it should be. And I said, yes. So I left thinking, but, but then I did do this though, just to stand up for myself. I did say, however, because this is not the way that I work. Um, I'll only work within this very tight area for you. And um, because I figured this, see, this is, these are the stories we tell ourselves, right? Well, I'll do it for a little bit of money or free uh, because um, they're going to see how wonderful I am. And of course, then they're going to hire me. Rookie mistake. I'd been in big business five years. I knew better. But um, so for Get this the little, money up front. <laughs> yeah. So I did for this little teeny tiny fee. You know, um, I said that I would do a one-hour consultation that doesn't work. People are overwhelmed. Um, you need at least two hours for the staging process just to talk with them, right? So anyway, so I make this agreement, and I told her, but only in these particular areas will I work. And it was within, honestly, a five-mile area of my home. So I thought, eh, it's not going to take much time out of my date. And I, again, I thought, she's going to be so impressed by me. She's going to, you know, turn my way later. Well, then the phone started ringing. Because I told you, she's one of the most prolific realtors in the area. And yeah. I'm talking to these clients, and I'm like, well, okay. And so, um, you know, I explain how I work, what's going to happen. And then they tell me where they are. Well, they're 45 minutes away, or they're an hour away, or they're clear across. They're totally without my parameters. Being a good person, I said, okay. You know, I thought I didn't want the realtor to look bad. So uh, I agreed to it, right? So, and I immediately called the office and said, hey guys, you know, I don't work out that far. I did it for you this one time because I don't want your realtor to look bad. So, well, that happened like three times. In the meantime, she never talks to me. It's always her people. And I'm like, okay. And every time I would see the phone ring, rather than be excited about business, I was, my stomach would kind of go down into my, you know, my, my, ugh, I just felt terrible. So yeah. um, I finally grew a backbone. And I thought, you know what? This is not the reason I started my business this way. I mean, I knew this wasn't going to work. And then she's not even honoring our agreement. So why am I trying to, you know, maintain her her um, um, reputation? Because she yeah. just wasn't very nice. And she was not being professional. 
and she wasn't going to our agreement. So anyway, I still remember making this phone call. And you guys, if you're out there, listen to me. How'd you do it? How'd you do it? <laughs> this will set you free. Now, see, I, I don't believe in burning bridges. I just okay, don't. Yeah. You just never know, right? So yeah, I you called really and I didn't get her. I got her minion, right? A woman who I had uh, grown to really like. Um, and I was talking to her on the phone. And I said, hey, look, you know what? Um, I know so-and-so has a great business, and that's the reason For I For those never who are watching, real quick, does... <laughs> Does Bobby break up by text? Does she leave a note with her minion? Or does she actually wait and talk face to face? Put your vote in the comments section really quickly as she's telling the story. Mm, let's see. Wow, I wish I could change the story and really make it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, now keep in mind, I met her the one time when I was interviewed and when I was talking to her, she even spoke of me as if I wasn't in that room. So no surprise, I haven't spoken to her since I, quote unquote, got the job. Face to face, via phone. Wait, I hate minions. <laughs> uh huh. I love that. So um, drum roll, please. So I said, look, I know that this works for you guys. And I know she's got a system that works great for her. And that's wonderful. But you know what? It's just not a fit for me. And I said, you know, you know the level of service I bring to the table. You know what I can do. And when you have a client that you believe deserves the um, level of professionalism and thoroughness that I bring to the table, I would welcome the opportunity to work with you again. Okay. So what I did was I set them up and said, you know, look, you know, I understand it works for you. It's not a fit for me. It wasn't a negative on them. Um, and it still kept the bridge open because... What was happening was I realized they were trying to get me into a system that that was not true service, not true customer service. It was just to go through the – to act as if they were doing it, right? So yeah. it was nice to be able to step away from that. But here was the thing that happened, okay? So, like, six months later or something, the gal who I liked from the office, she called me. She said, hey, Bobby. I got a consultation for you. I said, oh, my God, that's great. Okay, well, just so you remember, this is how I work, and these are the parameters. And she says, oh, yeah, 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 we know, we know, we know. We're really excited. I said, well, that's great. And so they said, well, well, what? And I said, and, and I said, who's the client? Guess who the client was? Oh, no. It was the realtor. Yeah, yeah. They were selling yeah. their house. And they didn't want to use the people that they were doing for these little one hour things. When it came to their own house, they called me. Yeah. Yeah. So that to me was like, I was just thrilled to death. But I also learned from that whole experience is when you work so hard to create your brand and when you create the system that you know that's effective for people, stick to it. Because when you don't, you know you're not like you're not in your strength you know so yeah. anyway i still have issues every time i see a listing and this particular realtor has this um i'll just say very particular marketing program in place and every time i hear hear this person advertise a part of me goes yeah but you called me <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that that was my breakup story and it felt so good it gave me power a, you know, uh, sometimes you don't get it right away, but then yeah. then it comes back, and then then you're validated for it. Um, and it's always good to I don't know it's the, the old the stay, saying of um, uh, uh, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Um, and so this is you standing for your pride in your work uh, mm -hmm. and not falling for just whatever comes your way. So exactly. good job. Yeah. So we got another caller. Hopefully, they're still on the line. Um, and so just a reminder, uh, hit share. Uh, invite people that are in the, in the area. Today, caller number 15 wins two free passes to the NKBA uh, Holiday Party and Masquerade Ball. So that should be crazy. And they've got helicopter rides. So mention Ooh. people. Yeah, yeah. So mention people. It should be a great date night. Uh, they bumped it up from one ticket to two tickets so that you can take it. 
it could be a nice date night out with the industry people. And, you know, we like to party. So it oh. should be a rager. Well, I wish I'd known I would have held off to be number 15. <laughs> well, no, to call back in because number 15, whoever wins. So let's get, uh, let's get a couple other people on. And thank you yeah. so much, Bobby. Thank Thanks for pulling over and being a safe driver. You got it. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, so let's see. Hopefully you're still there. Oh, Jill. So let's get Jill on and hopefully she's still there. Uh, yeah, so Rod was saying, so let people know where the party's at. I don't know if I'm frozen again. Uh, <laughs> oh, I flipped the screen. I think I'm here. <laughs> hey, Jill. Hey. I was doing a, a zoom in on the screen there. Yeah. So uh, this is Jill Irwin. Jill, uh, if you could share a little bit about you. Uh, you've got some exciting stuff coming up. So, and then uh, give us a breakup story. Uh because I know you've got to, you've got to, you've got to have some stories. Well, it's funny, Joseph. While I'm sitting here listening to her, I thought of another story. Actually, I think it's even better and a little bit more empowering for the women that are listening in on this one. Because I was about to break up with a client that I had worked with for a few months, and uh, you know that show that was called Designing for the Sexes, and when you're uh, you know, have that husband that comes into play and all of a sudden he starts putting down the... Damn that husband that comes oh! into play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darn him. And so um, when he did come into play, he got a little upset about some things. And um, I will admit it wasn't on my end. It was something that... Uh, I, but I had brought people into it. And, you know, that's something that you always have to think about when you're working with someone, when you bring others into it, how it will reflect on you. And so yeah. not that they were doing a, a poor job. Uh, it's just it's just the way it goes during a renovation, you know? Think was about this it. a Things contractor? Happen. I'm sorry? It was a contractor that you brought in, or it, was it a, a, an assistant? Or I, I will just say someone that was doing some work for me. I don't think okay. anybody okay. throw anybody under the bus. But, His name um, was Bob they Stinson. <laughs> they didn't really do that, that bad of a job. It was just <laughs> running a little bit slower. And so, um, okay. you know, things happen. And uh, so I was called in. And it was like one of those sit-down meetings as to, you know, what's going on and we're not happy with this and you need to do that and blah, blah, blah. Well, I tell you what. Again, like I said, I changed my story because I went there and I was going to maybe say, you know what, I'm done. But I had worked long and hard on this project and I wasn't going to give it up. So I stood there in front of this man and this woman and I said, nope, I'm sorry. You need to learn how to deal. <laughs> Just like I tell my children all the time. <laughs> Just deal. You know, I promise you when it is done. I think that's a hashtag. <laughs> hashtag Just me. deal. Just deal. <laughs> Because I will get it done. And I tell you what, it was one of the proudest moments I've ever had. Well, one of them um, as a female because I walked out of there and I got that man told in front of his wife and said, uh-uh, you know what? I know that I'm doing a good job. You're not going to tell me that I'm not or the person that I brought in. And then guess what happened? <laughs> I did a damn good job. <laughs> I finished that project. <laughs> Yeah, and, um, you know, I'm super proud of it. It's one that I will never forget because you got to stand up to people. Don't ever let anybody drag your you-know-what around and tell you what to do yeah. because that's you-know-what up. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm no. i uh, myself, Joseph, and you know me. <laughs> I mean, other, there's no FCC on Facebook. I so know. the I know. and I know the people on the show and the are whole probably <laughs> thinking, "What is Jill doing? Yeah. Why is she holding back?" But hey, that's pretty funny. No, um, yeah, I mean, so you know, so I worked for uh, a lighting company, and the first lighting company that I worked for, uh, we bent over backwards to please our customer, and you know, they just kind of stepped on you. Yeah. Uh, the customers would make change orders at the last second. It was it was BS. The second lighting company I worked for, they had a 
three change policy. So you can call in the first time and we let you know, hey, you've got three, you can make three changes. Otherwise, you know, maybe you're not ready. By the second one, we let them know, okay, so hey, that was your second change. You know what? Um, uh, after this, and you know, are you sure? You know, you got to get this finalized because we value our time and we value yours. By the third one, we fired them. By the third one, we're like, hey, so you know what? You're just not ready for us. And we value our time and we value your time. So when you're ready and you've got all your stuff together, come on back. And if we're available, then we'll take the order. Um, but no, it was the third one. You were done. Yeah. Um, and you know, it pissed off people. But strangely enough, they came back. That's right. So sometimes you get those back when you do that. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they, especially like high-end clients, um, being told no is like a, wait, what? what? <laughs> You're who are you to tell me no? Eh, you know, I'm me. And the answer is still no. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, hey, guys, call in. Caller number 15 today wins two passes to the NKBA, National Kitchens and Bath Association, um, uh, Holiday Masquerade and Ball in Fullerton, California. So tag your, invite your friends that are in the Southern California area. Um, if you'd like to get out and meet SoCal people and you're out in Vegas, come attend the Holiday Masquerade and Ball. They've got helicopter rides. Uh, I know of a few people that are have uh, professional artists coming mm -hmm. and doing their makeup for their mask. And then I was checking out some of these masks for online. Holy crap. These things are crazy. Like I, I couldn't walk around with those big beak things. Those things are insane. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> So, if Not you're in the area nice. or you know somebody, yeah, well, I just can't imagine walking around with that thing hanging off of your face. Yeah. I just, I don't know what they were thinking back in the day when that was like a cool dress up thing. I can't imagine that's good for dancing. You'd have to dance like way out here. Uh, I, yeah, no. Face paint. Face paint. So, I guess I wouldn't call her <laughs> number 15. <laughs> you weren't call her number 15. Uh uh. But um, anybody, uh, and people, it's funny because people will call, uh, will message later and say, you know, oh, I didn't have my hair, uh, my hair and makeup done, so I didn't call in, or I'm afraid to call in. Call in. Nicole just put uh, the website on to purchase tickets. So they're uh, selling tickets. It's in Fullerton. Uh, it's going to be a blast. If you check out the site, they've got just crazy stuff going on. It's at the um, Hangar 21 in Fullerton. So it's going to be a blast. And then uh, I think they've got a little bit of a changing of the guard. So oh. they've got new uh, new leadership uh, being announced and, and you know, uh, coming on board. So it should be a blast. It should be pretty crazy. You know, we've got Rod calling in, oh. and I'm sure Rod's got a good breakup story. All right, well, hold on and, one uh, second, because I see somebody that just joined, and I'm so happy that I'm going to be able to meet him next week in Nashville, where you Is that were. Chad James? Yes, indeed. Yeah, Chad is awesome. So, yeah, definitely meet up with Chad. And then uh, both of you guys check in because I want to hear – I want to know when you guys do your show and uh, and and then uh, just call in. I want to be – Remember, right. we were going to talk You guys are awesome. <laughs> we, just, we just teased it. We're teasing Teasing is good. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen. Let me, get, uh, let me get Rod in. Yes. And thanks for sharing. Thank you. And then feel free to call back in. Calling uh, caller number fifteen wins. I will. Great. Thanks. Bye. -bye. All right, Jill. Let's get Rod in. Uh, that one and add Rod in. And just remember, people, caller number fifteen wins two free tickets to the NKBA holiday party and masquerade. Um, should be a killer time. Helicopter rides, airplane hangar insanity hey rod so it's I not you joe it's a, me it's <laughs> it's not it's not me it's totally you you're fired it's totally you <laughs> no no really come on it's totally you um okay all right this one this one okay let me let me key this up i've been in business solo since 2000 okay I've been in, in this industry probably since 94. This one last year was a doozy. 
Okay, I, I, I'm, I, I'm happy to report that in most cases, if you set the parameters, like just any relationship, if you set the parameters uh, that basically boundaries with people, you have to do it. There, there's a part of this job that is really educating the, the, the customer and part of that and education. Let me jump in yeah. real quick for the other people that have been uh, calling in, uh, stay on uh, because uh, we'll get to you and we'll, we'll cycle through the calls. Um, but stay on and just give us a minute so everybody can share their breakup story. Uh, go thanks, ahead, Natasha, Sorry for the that. jacket comment. I'm getting, I'm, get, I'm getting response on my wardrobe. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Natasha. Um, see, I told you, it's not me, it's Joe, right? It's, oh, wait, hold on a second. It's not you, it's me. Never mind. I get the confused all the time. I, I haven't it, gotten it right know. since I, started, I was dating. The end result is the same. It's fucking done. <laughs> it's over. Wait, yeah, right? Okay. But, okay, so, so let's just say that, and, and some of your callers already said it, you really have to educate the client, and it educate the client in everything, right? Because... In some cases, they haven't. They may have never even worked with a designer before, so they don't really have a clue what the process is, you know. And they're watching HGTV, and HGTV is telling them that you could roll the bus away in 20 minutes and have everything done, right? Yeah. You don't do the big I'm bus thing. That. Yeah, yeah. Move that bus. Wait, what? Yeah. Hold on. 30 minutes later, the house is already done. Okay. <laughs> so, including landscaping. So the, the, we have to educate the client. And part of that education is how to deal with us. Individually, we are all very different in how we conduct our business. This is a very creative outlet for us. You know, it's part of our soul that we put out there. So it's very vulnerable. We put ourselves in a very vulnerable position. And you, like in any relationship, anybody who's been around long enough, had enough relationships that are prob you know, have not worked out, whatever, realizes that at the end of the day, you're not going to change who you are. You can't really change who they are. So the only thing you can do is set some guidelines at the very beginning as where your boundaries are, how you operate, what your expectations are, and what they can expect of you. And if that becomes a receptive thing, then you got something you can work with. If not, then you need to just run for the hills from day one, right? That's why you have a free consultation, right? It's free, but it's invaluable for what it gives you back. You know, uh, you touched on a good point too. And if you've worked on any, if you've watched a person paint, they start out with a blank canvas and you have no idea where they're going. And they add a few touches of paint and halfway through the painting, you may not know where they're going yet. And at the end of it, it suddenly comes together. So you right. don't really get to, and I'd say that uh, in a design process, uh, coming from the custom lighting side of it, I, I don't do interior design, but if you were to look at what's going on midway through, you'd look at it and go like, you know, shit, do I trust this? I, I've put all this time and I'm putting all this money into it. And if I'm looking at it midway, it, this is where the jitter, you know, the, the, the jitters come in. Joe, Joe, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, even as designers, I will tell you for me, there are times when you basically go down a certain path that you are going to want to try to achieve a certain result. And if you haven't done that to the point of nauseam where you've done it every single friggin' project, which I'm not that kind of designer, you are taking a risk every single time. So you're asking somebody to come along for a ride to trust you with that final outcome. But there are times in that process that you yourself as the purveyor of that design may also be wondering, am I going to get there? Oh, shit, so, is this going to work? <laughs> shit, is this going to work? Is this shit going to hang off the ceiling, right? I mean, so, so, oh, Edmund, please, come on. Free consultation is invaluable for the feedback it gives you. If you're going to charge everybody for everything, you're pretty much signed up to them. And then now you're stuck with them if you want to kick them to the curb whoopsie anyway but yeah. everybody run, runs it their own way right the the, th the thing the thing about this is you have to build boundaries and that's in any relationship business wise as well right and boundaries are not walls they are permeable gates they open up and you can let things but if you lay out the ground rules then people are now expected to understand where you're coming from and vice versa if you don't then when things happen, you don't have a benchmark to go back to. Like you were saying with your company, with the lighting company, three revisions. And then you remind them again about when it becomes like you got one more revision left. You're setting the guidelines. Chances are you're going to eliminate a lot of heartache and discomfort from some people that are genuinely interested in working with you. So that, that being said, let me share with you the story. So 20 years, 20 years in this thing, more or less. 
And we are doing, we're coming off a great year. We had a great project that we were done and then we sign up this other client. Okay. Walk up, we have a first meeting. It was referred to by a realtor, legitimate realtor, um, very valid, um, full of integrity. He's working with a client trying to lease a space for a uh, day spa. Okay. About 6,000 square feet in a, in a local market. And he's got this client and they've been through a couple of consultants that don't have any clue what to do with day spas. Day spas are their own animal. Okay. And, or, or spas in general are their own animal. And so he finds me on LinkedIn. We have a spa specialization. So he calls me up, we meet with the client and the client is coming off the, the Range Rover, the daughters. I mean, all the bells and whistles, all the bling is right in the place. Right. And I'm thinking, that's fine. I mean, we're, it's not like we're impressed. We've got clients that are like that, but you know, so no, no, no warning flags. Right. They, so we sit down, we start talking to her and basically it sounds like she's a little green. She doesn't really know about how to go about this process. And she's sort of admitting that she doesn't, that she needs the help. So, so far, so good. Everything is great. We go ahead and, and sign. We're doing the project. They're finalizing the lease. So no lease is in place yet. That should have been a warning sign. Okay. We should have waited until the lease was in place, but we're, we're setting up for this new year. Sure, we're on the, on, on the books with this client. Send them, send them the retainer checks, and we're doing business consultancy as well as design consultancy for them because that's our, oh, wow. again, sponsor an area of specialization for us. So we're, we're in. We, re, we, we, we usually have a slow ramp up, again, to try to work through things. Plus, our process is such that you got to get people to sign off on things along the way before you go full bore and commit to the whole package, right? It, it's only fair for everybody. So we, we're going through the process. We send out retainers. Damn, the retainer gets paid in 24 hours using Square online. I mean, boom, like that, right? No problem. We, we, we work on the first part. We submit the first invoice for the first phase of work that we've done. Boom, pays, no problem, right? Okay, great. Now we are in about spring of this year. And the money and the invoicing starts to drag. Yeah. And we're now being told that, you know, uh, the primary investor on the project has had a car accident and she needs to figure out a way for other investors to come on board and she's trying to get us to do an investment package. And we, you know, we go to a certain extent, you know, out of our way to basically try to help her because it's, it's an all everybody's interested in this project happens. Right. Yeah. And then silence, silence, absolute silence. And I'm like, okay, so we do try to connect and whatever. And at some point you basically go, you know what? I got to cut the cord. So we cut the cord. We 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 retained our how'd attorney. You do it? Huh? How'd you do it? This is the how'd you break up? Okay, it's coming. No, because the only way she was now communicating was text. Oh, okay. So you, right. you I, I've broken up by text before. So yeah, you text. were the you were the guy that broke up by text. Yeah, by, by text. I'm like, you know what? We can't we can't do this anymore. You know, you get your act together. It was literally like this. You get your act together. Then you know we're here. We're here to help. Whatever. You know, but we, we, we have to move on. We have to give our attention to other projects and we don't overload ourselves with projects so that we can give that one cust one on one customer service to our clients. When you hire us, it, you, I'm not going to pass you on to a minion, like somebody said. You hire us. I'm the one you see along with everybody else every single time we have a meeting. So, I, you know, you know I, I've uh, in the startup world, I've done a few different startups and I had a I had a startup that I did, uh, brought on a partner. We took on investment money from uh, a few different people, and we were in the fin friends and family round. And um, so I can, I can relate to your client side of it, where you, you thought you were funded. You thought the project is going, going ahead, so you start involving everybody because you got it. You got to involve everybody because that's your team, and you've got the investment. You see, you see the shit eating grin on my face. Yeah, I'm gonna no, let no. you. I'm gonna sit, let yourself set yourself up. Go ahead. There's a. No, there's the, a, there's the the hard part for me was uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't the the contractors on this one and the and the people that we were paying as we were going. Um, the the problem for me was uh, when the we got slapped with a lawsuit. We had to shut the whole thing down. Um, right. And and this was a, a friends and family round. So there was, there was a, an older couple. Uh, they were uh, uh, friends of the family of a business partner. And I had to go to them and say that, you know, we lost all the money, um, that we, 
That's got tough. hit with a lawsuit and, you know, just couldn't have, couldn't have anticipated that. And, and they're like, well, we want our money back. And I was like, you know, it was an investment. And, yeah. you know, I would have liked to profit. But so um, those are hard to suck up. And so your client, you know, uh, it, it tr uh, on the vendor level, um, but I'd say that, uh, that it was so hard to go talk so, to a couple, an elderly couple who were already, they were retired. This is their retirement money. And yeah. it wasn't all their retirement money, but it was a chunk. And, uh, yeah. you know. That's really, so, that's really tough. And you're the conveyor of that news. I mean, in, in, in a way, you're correct. It was an investment. There was a risk factor involved in it. But it's always, it was always uncomfortable to have that conversation, especially with people that are retired, that are, this is their savings, you know, and it's expensive as hell to basically get older in this country. So, but no, that's, that's it, the case. Like that, for your client, if I were talking to your client and from a person that's been on their end of it, yeah. you know, just have some balls. Uh, it's scary as shit. Uh, yeah. It's never good breaking bad news to anybody. There's never a good time for it. But um, just do it, you know. But here, here's here's the thing, Joe. I mean, I mean. And for the people that are calling in. Uh, yeah. You guys are getting added to the queue, so don't worry. Uh, uh, caller number 15 wins. I've got an eye on a caller number 15 already. I think we're almost there. So feel free to keep calling in um, and then and share your breakup story, too. It's an hour-long segment, so we'll announce the winner here uh, in, the, you know, in the next 15 minutes. So, so in this particular case, why I was saying that is we live in a world that is sensationalized, right? So when somebody said to me, all of a sudden we're dealing with a car accident where the primary investor is injured and she has to fly out to, and I'm going to leave the city out of it because I'll tell you why in a minute, right? Fly out and check out, check on this person and then basically comes back and says, you know, the guy is sort of in a coma. We, you know, we don't know what they're going to do. They didn't really put all the money in a bank for her to use. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's laying all this down and it's very sensationalized, right? And we're almost like at this point in this world, we're almost like uh, like immune. We're almost desensitized to sensationalism, right? So in, in a normal situation, that sounds like so far fetched and so ridiculous in terms of timing that at some point you're going, day, you know, bling, bling, red light, red light, something is off here, right? And we didn't. And even to the point where we helped because we, again, we all wanted to have this project succeed, right? It would have been the rest of the year for us in terms of billing. And so we even went as far as doing a, an investment package for her. Like, here's what the project is. Here's some visuals. So she could go get funding in, yeah. from alternative sources, right? But at some point, the communication stopped. And that's when immediately, if you, it, it's like any relationship. When there's, there's the communication stop, when, when you see a change, dramatic change in how people are connecting with one another, that should be a, really a red flag. And you should yeah. immediately respond to that and take whatever action. Now, we... In a very nice manner, still retain our lawyer, and we basically filed and or, or tried to communicate, I should say, first, right? So here's what turns out to be the case. And if you do a little digging, you will find the background of the story, right? But I'm not going to tell you where oh, to go yeah. dig, right? Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's just put it this way. The first feedback that we got from attorney was a link to a particular local TV station's coverage on a house being raided by FBI in uh, bulletproof vests, guns drawn. Oh man! Oh, okay, man. and then and then to follow up with that, to follow up with that, it turns out that our client. And think, remember, I've been in business for twenty years, so this is like my hilarious story for being in business. You know, my I'm, I, my client, the client, ended up being someone who was basically a escort, okay? That I basically had- I was a party company for a year. No, 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 so, I, 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 and I wasn't invited, what the hell, right? So, <laughs> okay, so, so, so we got big mansion and there was, a, there was an escort involved. And I mean, okay, ladies, excuse me and Joe at this point, we're, we're just being, you know, basically knuckle dragon men right here, but okay. But the, the, she had actually connected with a gentleman who was an executive of a large company, okay? And for in a period of two years, using the company credit card, they had built the company for about $6 million. Nice. Okay? Nice. <laughs> okay? Of if which, you're going to do it, just do it good. <laughs> 
and 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 the 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 federal government is involved. There's pending lawsuits, all kinds of stuff. And yet, their the the charges are not forthcoming, and it makes you wonder what bigger fish they're going after. But it was it was an unbelievable situation. Um, the the whole existence locally for this lady was basically being funded by illegally by a company credit card for from this guy's company where he worked. And they still couldn't pay the bills. <laughs> and they still, I mean, hey, look, they, they paid a certain amount of them, but the the point is, the point is, is when. When, when, when you see things that are very dramatic these days, when you see things that are very sensationalized, yeah. okay, we live in a world of Kardashians and craziness, right? Keep in mind that the real world isn't the world that is curated on Facebook, that is not curated on social media. And remember that when somebody tells you what they're all about, listen to what they're telling you. Yeah. Look for those signs. And go with right? those and, instincts too. Those instincts can right. uh, can actually it's that that's that survival instinct. Um, let's grab a couple more callers. Uh, thanks for calling in. Uh, we're getting close to the uh, caller number fifteen, so uh, keep calling in. And if you call back, uh, you might be able to hit the number fifteen spot too. So uh, have a great day, everybody. Here. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Rod. Thanks so much. Let's go, and uh, if you're on, stay on so that we can get to you. We're adding Carrie Ann. Let's add Carrie. Carrie, hopefully you're still there. Um, and remember that today we're sharing our breakup story with a shitty client. It could be a, it could be a funny story. Uh, you can help us all out by sharing a story that, um, that was, um, let's see, add invite. Okay. Um, so, Carrie, are you there? So, feel free to call in, add, um, let's see. Uh, today we are um, um, sorry, playing with the invites on here. So, um, today we are uh, sponsored by NKBA. We're giving the 15th caller wins a uh, two free passes to their holiday uh, masquerade and ball. So if you're in the Orange County area, um, feel free to call in uh, for your chance to win. If you're out in uh, Palm Springs, San Diego, any of the surrounding areas, uh, it's, a, it's on December 8th in the 410 Hangar number 21, so it should be a crazy time. There are uh, helicopter rides. Um, it's, it's just going to be a blast. So call in. Number 15 wins. We're getting closer to caller number 15, so anybody that calls in right now uh, has a really good chance of winning. So feel free to call in. Um, we're today talking about our breakup story with a client. So. Uh, would love to hear, and I know that people listening would also love to hear your breakup story. Um, we've all gone through it. It's an awkward situation for everybody, and um, but but uh, this is a good opportunity to share with the audience, share with people that are listening uh, how you did it. Because quite honestly, uh, we all sit there going like, "Oh man, how do I, you know? How do I do that? I, I should I do it?" Um, so this is a good chance for that. Hangar 21, the Fullerton Small Airport, with our venue to be in an aviation hangar. Yeah, uh, it should be pretty crazy. Jennifer, call in. You could be caller number 15. And um, and then, you know, if you're already planning on going, then this is a good way to sponsor somebody else as well. So, um, yeah, caller number 15, and then let's share your breakup story. Um, I loved uh, the second lighting company that I worked for because they had a really good way of, of handling that. It was a good good way of, and I shared just a little while ago, uh, we had a kind of a three strikes you're out type of a policy. And it wasn't, it wasn't rude. It just was, hey, we value our time. We value your time. And if you're not ready, you're just not ready yet. Um, and sometimes it's not the person. Sometimes they just, you know, on their end, the project is weird. Um, so, uh, yeah, 
And then uh, let's hear some funny stories. I, I, I'm sure I've got some breakup stories, but uh, so I, I, breaking up with a client, I'm sure that there's, there's some colorful stories out there. Uh, so feel free to call in. Caller number 15 uh, will win two free passes to the, to the NKBA um, holiday party and masquerade ball. Um, and then be sure to mention other people and be sure to hit the share button. Uh, Design Talk is a, a weekly Facebook Live call-in program, uh, and it's about you guys. Uh, this, this doesn't lead up to career coaching. Uh, I'm not a career coach. Um, this isn't uh, for you to buy my, uh, my um, uh, what are they called, uh, mastermind group packages. There's no buying a package. This is for you guys to call in, get your... I can only get this live on my computer, not phone. No, uh, Tara, um, on your phone, uh, your cell phone, uh, turn your camera, turn your phone horizontal. Uh, there's a green and white button. It is the little uh, uh, invite, add, add to video, add to call button. You click that and it throws it into a queue. Uh, we've got a queue of people and we're looking for caller number 15 to win the... Uh, the past. I called. Am I on it? Carrie, uh, hit the call in button again. I think it, it dropped it. So I was trying to get you on on the uh, on the call. So um, yeah, hit the green and white button. Hit the share button. Uh, add your URLs to the um, to the comment string. Uh, this video will go based off of the callers that we've had already. And uh, the shares, we're probably going to clear 30,000 people seeing this uh, Facebook Live. So add your URL and uh, get, some, get some marketing plugs in there. Um, and then, yeah, share with us your, your breakup story. Uh, so, yeah, um, so call on in. Um, and then share your breakup story. Uh, I'm sure you guys have some colorful ones. Uh, you don't have to name names. You don't have to name, uh, give specifics. Uh, just, just share. So we got Carrie who's going to call in. So let's get Carrie back on there. Carrie, it's saying that you're not answering on your end. No answer from video guest. So... I'm not sure how to do that one. I think I invited you in, so let me. Hmm. Oh, care. Oh, there we are. Let's see. I'll invite you back. So, um, Carrie, that should mean that you just jump on the call when I sent off that invite. So, um, again, today we're talking about uh, your breakup stories. Michelle, I've got to imagine that you've got a crazy breakup story. So, call in. We're on for a couple more minutes. Uh, so call in. I, I've got to believe that Michelle's got a crazy story. Uh, Carrie, I don't know why it's not connecting. Um, oh, no. That's weird. Uh, so call in. We're really close to the caller number 15. So this is a good chance for you to, I don't care if your hair and makeup's not done. Uh, this is a good chance to go live and win two tickets to uh, the NKBA's Holiday Masquerade and Ball Party in Fullerton, California, uh, December 8th. I'm not sure on the time. I've got to assume that it's going to be in the evening. Uh, Nicole, if you're watching, uh, throw the, the time in there. It's on the website. Nicole posted it earlier. Um, oh, uh, Carrie, call in from your cell phone. It's not your, uh, your iPad. Call in from your cell phone. It'll, uh, it'll be easier. Um, and uh, for you calling in, turn your phone horizontal, and it'll, okay, there you go. So uh, the, and I thought it was about 6 o'clock. 
So the it, December 8th, 6 o'clock, Fullerton, uh, hangar number 21. Uh, Nicole posted the website information. Uh, there, uh, you still have time to register and join us all at uh, NKBA's holiday party and masquerade. Carrie, are you still calling in from your cell phone or from your iPad? Um, try it from your from your cell phone. It's not working from your iPad. So, um, and then yeah, uh, let's hear your Michelle. I don't know what you're doing or if you're just waiting to get your makeup done, but uh, Michelle is a super fun lady, and I guarantee you she's got a crazy story to share. Um, I can't. I can't imagine her breakup story. So, uh, Michelle, call in. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine what your story would be. So, um, and again, uh, Facebook, this is a Facebook Live call-in talk show. We do this every week. Um, this is the less businessy side of the design industry. This is you guys sharing with each other your guys' stories. Um, and, and I consider this an ongoing conversation with the design industry. And that messes up the call. So don't call through Messenger. Call through the live. You've got to hit the green button on the live feed. Um, yeah, there was it. it <laughs> It interrupts the call. So yeah, people, don't uh, don't message me on uh, Messenger right now. Apparently, uh, airplane mode doesn't block that out. So let's see. Why is that stuck there? Um, so yeah, uh, Design Talk is a weekly live Facebook live call-in talk show. Um, it, in the last, I've been in the industry for 18 years, and in the last 18 years. Uh, or in the last two years, we've started calling this a community. And I don't know if that's uh, because of social media and just the speed of our industry and what's been going on with it, but, um, but we are kind of becoming a community, um, and with a community, communities talk, and they engage with one another, uh, they learn from each other, and so design talk is, is simply that. Where it's, it, it is you guys calling in, talking about issues. Uh, I don't pre-schedule the, um, the, the episodes or the topics. We listen to kind of what the callers have been saying on the last topic. And then, let's see, Julie. Invite. Okay, so um, we've got Julie calling in. And invite. So, um, so yeah. So, design talk is about you guys. Uh, there's no uh, career coaching, business coaching. There's no upgrading to a package. Uh, this is your guys's voice to call in, um, be live, and and join in the call. Ah, oh, that's weird. So we've got Julie calling in, but, and it's not connecting. Um, so go ahead and uh, call in. We're really close to caller number 15. So uh, call in. Uh, your chance to win two free passes to uh, this year's uh, NKBA Holiday Ball and Masquerade uh, in Fullerton at the uh, hangar number 21. Let's try this again. No answer. That's weird. I don't know what's going on here with the callers. So uh, call in. Carrie, I don't know why it's not connecting. Uh, for people calling in, you've got to be on your cell phone. You've got to turn your phone horizontal. And Um, 
Right, so yeah, caller number 15 uh, wins. Uh, we're really close. Carrie, uh, don't mess PM me through uh, Messenger. Don't call through Messenger. That's uh, cutting into the phone call. Oh, Julie, you're uh, uh, you're really close. We got we're really close to caller number 15. Uh, so uh, caller number 15 wins the two free passes to NKBA's Holiday Masquerade and Ball. Uh, call in. Uh, we've only got a few more minutes, and uh, let's hear your breakup story. Um, funny, serious, whatever, uh, on how you broke up. Uh, Rod just got done telling us how he broke up by text message. Um, so uh, much longer story to that one, but uh, broke up by text message. So um, call in, share your, your breakup story. And it's a bummer. I don't think we're going to be hearing from Michelle. Uh, Michelle, I guarantee you would have had a hilarious breakup story because Michelle is a crazy, crazy woman, and that would have been a blast. Um, so, it, yeah, Facebook, uh, Design, Wall, Design Talk Live is a weekly call-in talk show. Uh, there are no uh, FCC regulations on Facebook Live, so this is an open forum to – Call, talk, share your stories. Um, I guarantee you, whether you've got your makeup and hair done or not, there are other designers in the industry that are going through the same thing you're going through. And so by hearing you talk about it uh, in this open setting, they're learning from you guys too. Um, this isn't your traditional format of having one person call in and interviewing them and you guys just listening. This is a call-in talk show. For you guys to join in the call, uh, have your voice be heard. Uh, these, this, this particular live here will go in front of. We're we're going to clear thirty thousand people. Um, so getting in front of those people is is huge. You never know whose life you can impact by just sharing your story. So I invite you guys to call in weekly. Call in, join the call, share your share your experiences. Um, you never know who's going to benefit from it. I've watched uh, just this week, uh, over the weekend, somebody posted about Luann. And uh, uh, Luann Nagara, she's got a, uh, a well-designed business podcast. And just watching and hearing how people are affected by her. Or um, Samantha, I'm gonna slaughter, uh, sl Samantha Parker. She's the CEO of Badassery Magazine. Uh, and man, it's just amazing watching her. If you guys get a chance, follow Samantha Parker, Badassery. Um, just the level of engagement and how people are empowered to go do, you know, to step outside their comfort zone and go pursue this, this uh, empowerment. It's just crazy. So um, we've only got a couple, a couple more minutes. We're right there at caller 15. So the next person that calls uh, will win the uh, two passes to uh, NKBA's uh, Holiday Masquerade and Ball. So this is your chance to call in and win. Um, so join the call. If you are already going and uh, you could think of two, uh, two people that you'd like to bring with you, uh, call in. So, and then today's topic is... Um, is your breakup story. So share your breakup story. Let us know how you guys broke up with a client. Um, uh, the first lighting company that I worked for, they were not very good at that. Uh, and, and that's a good skill to develop. The second company was very good at it. Uh, they had strict boundaries and they knew uh, where, they were, where they were at. Let's get... Okay, so we have the 15th caller joining right now, and I hope she picks up. We sent the invite, uh, so hopefully she picks up. 
And then I'm super excited about this one because this should be pretty fun. So, and I'm glad to finally get this person on air. So, pick up, pick up, pick up. <laughs> um, so again, uh, if, uh, Design Talk Live, it's a weekly call-in program. Uh, this is your platform for sharing uh, your experiences with the, the design community. As we become, as we move from an industry to a community, this is about sharing experiences. This is, this is not your typical call-in format or, or uh, interview format where we just have one person and you guys sit passively listening and hopefully learning. This is you guys calling in. Um, we had you there, so call back in because you would have been the 15th caller. Other Let's see. And, and you've got a Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, Carrie. Hey. I was trying to add you in, and you're finally live. Awesome. So you are our 15th caller. We had... Right. We had another person, and it would have, but the call didn't go through. So you are the 15th okay. caller, and you've won <laughs> the two free passes from NKBA to their holiday party in, uh, in Florida. Oh, cool. Yeah. So now afterwards, uh, PM me uh, your uh, contact info, and then we'll get that over to, to Nicole, and then they will get in contact with you and get you your passes. Oh, awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, you've, you've got me live in the background. Um, so do you have a breakup story? Okay. Congratulations. All right, here's my, here's my little story. Um, I okay. have, can you see me? Yeah. Okay, hang on. So do you have a breakup story? I have a breakup story. Um, I had, um, we had, I had, um, we had clients, I had a, a shop where we did everything custom for like 15 years and we had these clients who were doing a, a yacht. And so it was this big 50 foot yacht with just the best of everything. And they, we were doing all the, you know, custom bedding and interior upholstery and everything. And they basically wanted round bedspreads. And so we said, well, you know, there's no round bedspread factory. So the only way to get one is for us to custom quilt you a bedspread and then have it come back. And then I'll have our seamstress cut up this giant bedspread and turn it into a round bedspread. So we laid out everything, you know, the custom quilting takes eight weeks and then it has to come back here and then it has to go through our workroom and we'll kind of hold you a spot. And so you're looking at 10 to, you know, 12 weeks before these bedspreads show up. So they were like, oh, thank you so much. We understand. And the boat's not even going to be ready. And we're so thrilled to find you to be able to even do this for us. So everything's great. So around, um, and these, the people were, um, they own like three McDonald's in the area. And I don't hmm. think that they had ever worked with a designer before. And um, they were also both enormously overweight, which figures into my story later, believe it or not. Okay. So, um, so around like the eighth week, the husband comes into my shop and talks to my salesperson and says, you know, these bedspreads are just taking forever. And, you know, it's just been too long. I've got to have them now. Like, you know, I guess he wanted to launch the boat. So, you know, my person looks up the order and says, well, you know, they're really not due for another three or four weeks, but actually we think that they're on their way from the quilters now. So we'll just try to like hurry up the sewing into the round part for you. So, um, so he says, well, you know, I really need them and it's been too long. And he starts having this like major heart attack, you know, fit and getting really volatile. So, you know, my person pulls out the paperwork and says, you know, look at the calendar you are here on week eight for something that you agreed to receive on week 12. And so the guy yeah. just completely goes off on him. Like every bad, nasty F word just completely loses it. So, um, so he told him like, you have to get out of the store. So he left, he calls me, the client calls me and he's like, you're a salesperson just, you know, was so awful. And he was using all this bad language and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, and I basically said, no, you know, it was you, you started it. 
but it doesn't matter. Like we need to like, just finish this up and never come in my store again. So mm. he says, well, basically, you know, if you don't have it by like, you know, a week from Friday or whatever, you know, bad things are going to happen. He starts being really threatening and nasty with me. So I said, fine, we'll speed up a little bit. We'll have it for you. So it comes in the day that he's coming to pick it up. He comes in, he like says nothing to me, just comes in, like gets the bed spread. He's like, thank you very much, you know? And um, so he leaves. So we're like, good riddance, you know, to yeah. those people. And I think the, I think the wife also came in in between and like yelled at us. <laughs> Like during the oh. two weeks that we were making it up. And both of them had like the most un uncalled for foul language. So we were just like, good riddance. I hope they never darken our door again. So fast forward like 10 years. Okay. And now I have a different salesperson. And she says to me, well, I just, you know, met the most lovely people. And they are going to buy like motorized Hunter Douglas shades for the entire house. And it's like an 8,000 square foot house. It's like a huge. Oh, wow. So I'm like, oh, happy day. This is wonderful. You know, she's like, they are the sweetest people. Wait till you meet them. You know, I'm new to this product. Will you come with me to measure? So <laughs> I go to the house and it's Joe and Marilyn, <laughs> the horrible people. And they're all. Oh, like, wow. And they never said a word about the previous situation. It was like, literally, like, they were different people. And they were like, you know, we've recently both both lost 100 pounds, and we feel so much better. <laughs> and so oh, they wow. were skinny and happy and sweet and healthy and lived in this great big house that they had been custom building. And it was literally like, I don't know, like, what drugs they found or – but. They had a complete personality makeover and we ended up working with them off and on for a couple more years, but nobody ever mentioned the fact that they were so foul to me and I had to literally order them to never, ever contact me again. It was really it wow. was the same location the whole time. So they knew they were coming. Like if we were so terrible, you know, why did they have to come back, you know, after a bedspread fight to get their entire yeah. house done? So, Yeah. That's a crazy story. Been, that was right? a that was a twist. I I I figured you were headed towards yeah, you would come across them again, but that you know that you guys would instantly realize and then run for the hills, but yeah. That's it was, crazy. It was one of those times where just rising above the situation and putting that boundary and saying like you're the one that started the foul language. We're in the right. You're going to get your bed spread on time and just don't ever come in here again. Like, just don't engage in that kind of behavior with them. Um, which really, uh, that was something too that I learned. One of the things that I learned, I wanted to share a really long time ago when I first started out, I worked um, for Lynn Von Kersing in, in uh, Los Angeles. And she basically said, I don't do contracts, which really surprised me. And she said, the thing about a contract is, you know, you want to, people want to contract with their client to make sure that, um, that, they're getting, you know, that the client's going to go through with the work, but yeah. the contract obligates you to finish the work if you really don't get along with the people. And yeah, contracts and go both ways. Really good advice. So, so what I do is a letter of agreement that is a couple pages that basically says, here's how we work together. Let me explain to you how I work and here's what you can expect. And then they sign it. So they feel like they've kind of signed a thing, like a contract. Yeah. But they also are signing something that says, I understand, like, that you can't, you know, you can't refund things. I can't order you, you know, an $8,000 custom sofa and you not like it. You know, you're stuck with it. So, um, you know, really good advice. Uh, what I do is I when just Rod was on into chunks. So we do a letter of agreement, yeah. but then we do a contract for each custom order, like by the room or, you know, by the drapery. So they're still obligated. They're still, they still have to pay a contract, but it's only for yeah. like the $8,000 sofa. So if I don't like them when I'm done with the sofa, even if we have a whole 50 grand planned, you know, I can, if they're a giant pain, I can just be like, you know what? I don't think we're a good fit. Let's move on. And I'm yeah, that's no, uh, that's a really interesting approach. I, I don't know if I've, I've heard of that one before. I mean, it, it still kind of gets a person to feel committed. Right. But, uh, but you're both not really committed. Right. So. 
limited to like the things that they order from you. So you could do it by the room or by the drapery project. And it, the other thing is it com people completely kind of, you know, I live in a smaller town and not, you know, a big metropolitan area where people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like a nice project here is, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So it, it actually um, keeps people from completely freaking out. <laughs> if you just uh -huh. said, it's going to be $30,000 to do your living room, they might have a heart attack or, you know, the wife will be like, oh yeah, that's how much it is, honey. And the husband will be like, oh my God. So <laughs> what I basically do is write up elements of the room as contracts and give them a stack and say, here's your furniture, that's $6,000. Here's your draperies, it's $4,000. Here's your rug, it's $6,000. And so they're adding it up in their head as they go. And they can see that all of those prices are things that they selected with me and they yeah. made that room $30,000, not me. Yeah. yeah. It really well. Because the other thing is well, freedom to say, like, if this is out of my budget, well, then you need to pick a different rug. You know, yeah. we need to go rug. Well, I, I dig your approach. I've never heard of that. I mean, contracts do go both ways. Right. So, uh, so it might sound easy to break up with your client. Uh, they could also legally hold you to it, too, if a contract <laughs> has been signed. So... That's a pretty interesting, and congratulations on winning. This should oh, be a blast. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. So message me, PM me uh, after, and then uh, shoot me over your contact info, and then Nicole will get in touch with you. Uh, it's December 8th, and for everybody else, Nicole posted the website link. Uh, uh, you can uh, join us December 8th in Fullerton, Hangar 21. They've got helicopter rides. It's going to be a blast. There's a changing of the guard. And so some new leadership's going to be announced. And, and it's, if you've been to industry stuff like this, it's going to be a blast. Plus, it's a masquerade. Oh, so fun. we get to dress up and put some you know, masks on and do some face paint. Cool. And, uh, and it's always fun dressing up for stuff like this. So um, congratulations. Very much. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, join us next week. Uh, next week we are talking about, um, I don't know, next week's kind of an interesting one. We're talking about, uh, so in the last few years we've been, or in the last 10 years, uh, schooling has been really pushing uh, computer and engineering and, and um, nursing, but we're losing our tradespeople. Mm -hmm. And those tradespeople, because they weren't able to work all these years, they've let their licenses go. And so in the design field, we're struggling with long lead times with the tradespeople that are still available. And so next week, um, hopefully it all goes well. We've got some schools calling in. We've got some contractors calling in. So next week would be a really good conversation to be had with, well, what are we doing on the, on the school front of it? Uh, how are they attracting in an age of millennials and people that want to not get their hands dirty how are we attracting uh, people, craftsmen, and those right. tradespeople? So next week should be really fun. It'd be a good conversation to join in on. Uh, cool. Share with us your thoughts and feelings about it. But congratulations! How Thank exciting! Um, and I look forward to seeing you on December eighth. Beautiful. All, All right. right. Thank you guys. Remember to look up Nicole's uh, the website and register as well. And uh, we'll see you guys next uh, next Tuesday, eight o'clock for Design Talk. Have a great week.